streaming live. Coming at you live. All right. Um, let me just set up the chat window here. Go. All right, I'm going to send out texts while people probably start filing in. Um, I'm going to Facebook this thing. Should have did this before, but I'm going to just do streaming now live. Stream live. YouTube, it's come spell this all out six. Hey Valerie, what's up? Evening. Um, I'm just tweeting out. I totally uh, didn't prepare uh, like I usually do. Um, so I'm Facebooking. Um, and Instagramming this stream right now. So share there. Yo, Andrew, what's up? I'm just doing some, totally forgot to um, post about this, so I'm doing that. Just did Facebook. Um, we're gonna do, yo, what's up, Bruno? Um, so I've been doing anatomy two days a week, and one day I usually split up, and I'll uh, use that time for um, facial stuff, and then one day for figure drawing, which is um, I have a trouble with. I'm having trouble with hips. Um, and a lot of the leg stuff, uh, obviously you can always work on hands and feet and back is always, you know, pretty much <laughs> anything that's not a bust shot from the straight front. Uh, I'm not super, super superior on, I'm decent with arms, um, which means I'm okay with the legs. I'm somewhat, but, um, yeah, so we're going to do legs again. I worked on if RJ was here. Um, he may hop in, but he mentioned Hogarth, and maybe we mentioned Hogarth last night too, but um, with Hogarth, I'm a little iffy on, but I, I studied him today, and so I'm going to continue studying his work again for legs. Um, I think what's this pushed me away from him, like of recent, uh, or whenever I have actually studied him, it's been... Uh, kind of hit or miss because maybe at first I was looking for good looking drawings maybe he's a good artist but he, the the renderings are maybe just not my style or not what I'm looking for for a finish so it, I'm much more attracted to Loomis and and Bridgman and and the others um, but Hogarth today like it's really surprising me and how much I'm retaining from what I've done for the legs so far and I'll show you in a minute. I'm about to go to the art desk right now and show you guys uh, what's going on. 
Um, think of what else I need. Oh, music. That's it. I'm going to put on today. I was trying to do it yesterday, and I figured it out today. I'm just going to play some. I'm going to connect my phone to my little Alexa speaker. That way I can play whatever remotely here. So. Um, Alexa, connect to my phone. Searching. Now connected to Joey C's iPhone. Nice. That actually worked. I, I hate having Alexa on because I always think they're listening in, which I'm pretty sure they are. Um, but at least I can do this thing. And I'm going to switch over to the um, desk. Art desk. There we go. Need to clean this thing. Um, I'm gonna check my settings. Looks okay. Cause yesterday there was a problem with um, there was a problem with what do we have problem? Well, some of the, the exposure, I guess. So let's pull up a piece of paper here. This is um, this is some of the Hogarth stuff I did today. Okay. Let's see if it's too blown out. And I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with it since I'm gonna be over here anyway. I'm gonna try to mess with it and make sure we're not blowing out too much here. Oh, Andrew, um, give me one second and I'll answer that in a minute. Um, I'm just setting up the music and whatnot. Give me a minute, I'll definitely have my two cents on that. Let's see if I play a video, will it stop the stream? So give me if it, yo, if it cuts off, um, if this cuts off, uh, stay tuned because I'll be reconnecting in a second. Sweet, got some Zelda music playing. Breath of the Wild, if you're a fan, shout out. And the stream still works. Perfect. Okay, so um, before I jump into the Hogarth stuff, um, all right, so your question. Uh, would you say trying to break in as a traditional, not digital pencil is a dying art? Um, I would love to work it. There is no such thing as um, really a dying art in almost any field uh, as long as you can work quick that's what counts so um, not even quick just work standard you know if you can put out pages um, at a consistent rate meet deadlines uh, there's no way a specific way works over others uh, there's some guys that still just hand paint you know Alex Ross style there's um, plenty of people that do it that way so uh, if you want a pencil, like sometimes I do, um, it is definitely not a dying, dying art. You can, um, all my, the stuff that DC looked at, uh, in my last review was all pencil, like, um, so 
that's still a thing. You know, the digital stuff comes in with concept art. A lot of concept artists are like that. But yeah, you're right, Valerie. There's still a lot of handwriting uh, or hand lettered uh, comics out there, and that's almost like a dying art in some ways. But in the indie field, at least, it's legitimately still a thing. Um, but yeah, I think these days most lettering is done non-traditional. Yeah, there's well, I I don't I mean I think there's a lot of good. There's a lot of good artists like Raposo was all digital and he's super um, foundational. Um, and there's a lot of concept artists like that that are all digital. Um, but I think you're right, Jeremy. There is such a thing where. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, everything is legit and indie. Um, but yeah, I think the traditional people. The, well, Traditional artists just tend to be more, um, I guess, structurally sound in their artwork because they've usually gone to art school or had some, some, I, just things are harder to develop um, traditionally. So you're having to work at it a little more, I think. Whereas digital, you're able to like cut and paste, copy paste. You know, there's a lot of those shortcuts that. You can really uh, be a detriment to like just learning overall. So, all right, I'm gonna jump into as let me see what's playing. Ooh, the uh, the desert dungeon for Zelda is playing right now. Sounds very deserty. Um, let's see. Uh, so Hogarth. So this is what I did today to start, and then we'll continue on here. Um, I color coded it because I liked how I did it on the computer and I just used some Copic markers and color coded it because this is probably what I was having trouble with is like what you see when you turn the leg so and all this stuff I know I just haven't studied a lot so if we look over here uh, the leg and arms are cylinders right and they go back in space whatever um, we'll just put a little cross section in here and everything you put on this cylinder for a leg or an arm wraps, you know, the muscles wrap around and, and find their positions. You don't even have to have muscle groups and you just draw shapes on top of cylinders and that's how things work for cylinders, um, or for arms and legs. Either way, when I look at legs, I'm just super unfamiliar because you don't see them a lot with arms. You see more often. And I think that's why people have trouble with legs more than arms because you just don't see them a lot um, same thing with backs and feet like uh, you just don't see those things as much as other things so um, I color coded it like I said and he goes through all the names but I don't really do that um, I, don't, I kind of remember some of the names but I color coded it so Valerie saying digital pens Penciling has a number of hiccups, not only too much detail for print ink resolutions. I can pencil a page in a day, doing the same page digitally almost a week. Hmm. Interesting. That's a, <clears throat> I feel like that's almost the exact opposite response that I would expect. Usually digital pencilers are knock it out quicker because they can knock out the, um, you know, they can knock out the, I guess the inks, if you want to do it that way. So yeah, that's why I would expect the other way around. Cause I'm sometimes, you're right. I'm sometimes more focused on detail when I'm, um, can zoom in so much. I, I, I really love a, a zoom in, zoom out lock on Photoshop or Clip Studio. That would really help me. <laughs> Cause I just, I need to like, be able to not it's almost like using this pencil this dull pencil it just focus makes me focus not on the detail um, and that's why I use it yeah you're right so you get the dinks done at the same time exactly right so um, and obviously get all the copy paste and transform tools and those can save time a lot so depending on how detailed uh, and how much copy pasting you do digital can help you out there some of my videos um, that I did a couple of years ago were 
my digital um, sequence or my process uh, really evolved evolved into like copy and pasting and, and using that to your advantage. It's interesting. The way I pencil on the computer is, um, let me get this Hogarth thing, thing going. That way I can talk and draw. Um, so the way I view digital penciling, um, is I, I think about them like Freddie Williams does where, uh, I consider like a, not a lot of line weights and just the structural drawing the pencil work on the computer. And then when you start adding more black, uh, you know, spotting blacks and, and putting in render lines uh, and kind of like uh, elaborating and, and plotting your uh, light source, that's when I consider that starting to be more the ink stage digitally. Anyway, um, let's do, maybe do a new page. I could do, um, the back of the leg here, um, on this side over here, I don't know if I have enough room though. Let's see. Oops. You see this? Yeah. Right here. I can do it up here. And I'll do the same thing. I just want to, I like color coding just because it helps me rotate. That's what I was explaining before. When you have, I always kind of struggle with like, when you look at the leg from, you know, say this is the inside of the leg, you know, what muscles do you see from the inside? What muscles do you see if that was the outside? Um, and rotating the leg that way is kind of the struggle that I've been in. So... Actually, I don't know what what I'm using. It it feels light, so I'm gonna say, well, we can compare. Let me see. Cause I know this is HB. Yeah, I'm using 2H. Cause that's yeah, that's your difference there. This is HB. This is 2H. So yeah, I'm using 2H. I like using 2H. It's less smeary. Okay, so this is the back side of the legs, and we're just gonna probably crop at the maybe the tailbone because I don't want to do the whole thing. I don't know how tilted that is. It seems like it's too tilted here. All right. I'm just putting in a box for the pelvis. All right. Um, and like I said, I Garth today. So um, if RJ was here, I'd tell him, you know, thanks for the suggestion. Because uh, I like mixing it up anyway. I still, am, I think uh, Loomis still holds my number one spot but um, just the way he delineates his muscles Hogarth does um, it doesn't necessarily make the best drawings I think and that's what detracts me from it but I think they for educational purposes they're really really good so I'm just gonna plot in the back of the leg here so these would be your hamstring which separates in between a couple, few different muscles. All right, let's see here. Let's try to do a middle line. I've just never been a fan of like the muscle fiber renderings. You know what I mean? Um, it's not that they're not useful, but unless you're doing, I just think they're not super useful if you need to know the direction of a if you need to know the direction of a leg or a muscle fiber for a leg or whatever you're doing um just look it up 
on a per case basis, I think. So I'm just kind of, I think it's a split into thirds to the knee, seems like it. Um, and the knee's kind of down here. We're looking at the back of the leg, so the knee you barely see. I'm not going to jump in too far into the, you know, the exactness of, of everything here. But I do love how the, the back of the leg, I think it's my favorite part of the leg. Because um, really it's the tricep and the bicep. This muscle here, um, I'll, I'll plot it in here. This one on the exterior side, the outside side. The one I'm drawing right now is literally the leg bicep. Like it's called the bicep uh, femoris because it's the bicep for the femur. Um, but yeah, that's why I like the backside of the leg because it's like the inside of the arm. You know, it's, it looks very similar. Yeah. I agree with that. All right, so I'm gonna bring this butt down a little bit. All right. I'm being as rough as possible in the beginning because it, usually it's a lot of error Especially, I like how this, uh, since we're listening to Zelda, this almost looks like the Triforce. Because <laughs> um, the the diamond kind of shape of the back of the knee. Um, but yeah, there's teardrops for the, he draws them really like teardrops. Oh, girl. The calves. See, what's your favorite Loomis book? I have, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, she's right on that one. Um, I would say that one, the, what's that one that is almost totally different? Is it the one that goes over composition? I forget that what that one is. That one's more about breaking down um, images. So maybe if you're studying like art history or other arts, you can like compare the masters to that book. I forget which one that was called. Help me out, Valerie. Um, if I had all the names, actual names of the books in front of me, it'd be easy. Maybe too wide, but it's okay for right now. Eye of the Painter. Well, figure drawing for all it's worth is, um, I, know, I think it's my one of my favorites, but I think she's right. You should probably start with um, the foundational book. I think it's just foundational drawing. Is that what it's called? I can't remember what it's called. But yeah, the way he instructs, I think he's the best writer out of all of them. Um, Loomis is. And I just like how cold he is about... about the foundations he's just like you know you you match up the lines and put values where they want where they need to be and your stuff will look like magic people will think you've done magic and 
really all you've done is just follow the rules. Um, and that's just how most of this is. It's like you follow the rules and people will think you're amazing. And that's just how art is in the mo for the most part. Um, you don't have to have this like art intuition. I don't kind of believe in that. You know, you can, I think you can be like a very square kind of person, follow the rules mathematically and get crazy results. Um, but yeah, I, I like, uh, you guys heard of Robot Pencil? He's, um, he's a concept artist. His name's Anthony Jones and I'm a fan of him. I like, if you listen to some of his interviews, he's cool because he started as a programmer and he's like one of those case studies that people should have <laughs> overall for artists. Um, the dude was a programmer and not an artistic programmer either. Not one of those guys that did both. He didn't draw at all. And then suddenly, I don't know, he needed money or just got burnt out on, on scripting and uh, started learning how to paint and he just did studies he actually has a YouTube video that's really awesome about explaining how to study um, and I can get into that a little bit here actually while we're on the subject <laughs> why are you saying I'm amazing <laughs> um, Anyway, uh, what was I talking about here? This leg is super elongated. So what I might have to do is elongate this to match. Or I can crop. I can go up here and crop. I think this is the easiest part to get in. So I can just do this and then it won't be so elongated. I think it's because I'm having to stay back because of the camera and it's messing with my focal point or my focal like length if you will anyway the way I was gonna explain for Anthony Jones technique of studying um, he's actually has an acronym for it <laughs> I can't remember what it is but it's it's pretty funny um, um, dang really can't remember anyway look it up if you want um, but just like how I have these drawings over here these color-coded stuff Hogarth doesn't do that Hogarth, Hogarth have it, has it like this I'm doing the color coding because I noticed that it helps me so um, when you study like your uh, say your times tables like back in math class or you, or you study like um, definitions for English or you study whatever you're studying um, it applies to art as well. It's like art's not necessarily um, part of its copying like I am doing here, but more it's more about you finding a method to remember what you're you're doing. Um, study is just all about how much information uh, can you retain the next day. You know? Oh man. So there's only a little bit of muscle here and then it hits this. Okay. Um, so I did the color coding because it helps me. It might not help everyone. And, um, at the same time, uh, like I said, you want to do things that work for you. And, uh, yeah, studying breaks down to a few different things like, use flashcards to study time tables like doing color coding or doing labeling things all that's going to help you remember what you're doing so it's not just about copying making a pretty picture in fact it's not about making a pretty picture at all there we go you looked it up that's awesome assess specify apply practice bam so um he talks about like you said assessing the situation that's pretty much finding what you need to learn um, or assess your previous work find out by specifying what you need to learn um, and then check it out apply it to something of your own work and then keep practicing it over and over it's like 
practice part is rinse and repeat pretty much. But yeah, I think um, that's awesome that you looked it up for me, Valerie. Yeah, watch more of his videos if you really, really like it. The other day I was working on triceps, looking at the arm from behind, and I would draw it over and over, and then try to draw it without looking. Yeah, that's actually a super good me method to do it. It's like, it's literally like what you do with flashcards. You know, you would do a bunch of flashcards, and then eventually you wouldn't have to flip the card. You know what I mean? It's just there to help you memorize what's going on. The thing is with, with art, um, all that is way more complex, so... Um, it can get super, I don't know what, what the word is, um, confusing maybe, maybe you don't pick it up the first time and it takes days and days to remember what you're doing, um, say on the legs, where the muscle groups are, sometimes you just don't remember, but the more you do these little drawings, the more you're going to remember. Maybe, maybe it's not this drawing, maybe it's seven drawings later down the line for me to remember exactly what I'm doing. Um, but eventually uh, you may remember. That's how it works. All right. Yeah, this angle's really messing with me. Can't necessarily get exactly what I'm seeing. There we go. All right, I'm gonna start putting in some more of the muscle groups back here. That way I can have something to compare to. And I kind of draw my calves totally different than what he's got here. And he's doing this, this way to draw probably really on purpose to show exactly where things are located. clean this stuff up. Yeah, but I, I like legs because they're like, um, I mean, I like certain angles of the legs and I think the more you draw them, the, the more you're going to get accustomed to notice how they work in, mo in more angles. Um, and I'm sure I'll, I'll like them better and, and more and more. I'm going to try to draw some of the stuff up here because I may be able to color code stuff up here because I know what this is. This is the uh, greater, what's it called? The greater procanter, prochanter, this little wide part of the hip, and then the uh, gluteus medius is up here that connects this, this arch thing here. That pretty much is the top of the butt. Or the side of the butt, kind of top and side of the butt. Hmm, cool. So it's like those, um, what do they call them? Mnemonics? Or what is that what they call? Like the way to remember different things is to like a t tie them to physical or emotions or stories. Mnemonic devices is that what we're talking about? Alright, so this is the, I'm roughly putting it in. trying to be as somewhat quick as possible because I like to do um, another angle since I do have a few already shown here I'd like to do another front angle 
But yeah, that's an awesome way to do things is just to have your own method of remembering things. Actually, I got a shout out to, if you're a fan of indie comics, you probably know the name Justin, uh, or Jason Brubaker, why I say Justin. So Jason Brubaker is an indie comic artist, um, and he's got a kind of a book out. It's, um, oh, this thing looks like a heart, the way he draws it. Um, so, Brubaker, that's what we're talking about. Um, the way Brubaker do, does things, uh, actually he has a book that tells you how he learned to draw, which is kind of like what you're talking about, uh, finding ways to remember it. So like, like you said, Andrew, um, like Andrew said, drawing it the way his book works, uh, Brubaker's book, so it's, it's called Cognitive uh, Drawing. I did, I did help kickstart it, but it never went, but he just gave him out free, I think, anyway. I think he's going to relaunch it. Maybe he just canceled it or something. Either way, it's called Cognitive, cognitive Drawing, and pretty much um, draw something today. Like, he's a workbook of maybe, say, you draw a leg in this angle today, and then, um, like you said, like Andrew said, then draw it from memory, and then look and see what you messed up on it and redraw it with reference. And then do it again with memory. So exactly what you were trying to say, Andrew. Um, that method works really well. Um, the thing, the next piece of the puzzle, though, is the next day um, you need to redraw it again once at least, because um, you kind of everything settles in the brain the next day. Um, you kind of learn things while you're sleeping. Is how our brains work. So that's why he's kind of coined the, that term, I guess, cognitive drawing, because it's a key piece of the puzzle. Um, so, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to draw this other way. I don't think I will. I'm just going to put in the silhouette. Um, and, yeah. I think uh, it's a cool way to, 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 to draw, for sure. Or learn to draw, rather. Alright. Alright. This cap is probably a little big. Um... Yeah, I gotta check out your videos too, Valerie, um, and maybe your website if you got it as well. I haven't um, done investigating um, yet, so I will have to do that. All right, so I'm gonna plot in these muscles here, and then we'll color code and move on. These are the the two muscles that are almost named the same thing, very close. The semi tendon sores, tendon, ten, tendon so, tendinosis, tendinosis, semi, semi tendinosis is one of them, but the other one, is, I call them just the semis. I mean, you don't really need to know the muscle names, but um, as long as you know they're there. I don't even think you, I mean, it's good to know this stuff. What the hell just happened there? There we go. Um, the muscle stuff, the the names, I don't think you really need to know. <laughs> uh, I'm sure your videos are fine. Um, I like watching, especially, I almost like the indie or more indie kind of startup videos if they're if that's what you're more embarrassed about, um, is production value. Um, yeah, it's hard to have the time to put up like well edited and 
put together videos like on a regular basis. It's different to do it one time and it's way different to do it all the time. So. All right, here. I think the problem is this needs to come out more to have the depth effect that we want. Um, another shout out. I, I kickstarted a Bart Sears book on obviously Kickstarter, but he's an old school comic artist and he draws like huge dudes and kind of busty women. <laughs> but that's like a 90s thing, you know what I mean? Like those 90s comics. Um, but he's got some cool ways to draw. Um, and I kickstarted it and I got the free, P or not the free PDF, got the PDF that I paid for. And um, from that, I've learned some things, definitely. So maybe I'll share one day and draw from that. I think that's a good thing to draw from because it's comic oriented. And um, what you won't get from learning Loomis, I think, I think all the old school masters, um, with the, maybe the exception of Bridgman, because Bridgman has like this exaggeration that kind of has a superhero effect. Um, but yeah, all the old masters, masters draw kind of more average, um, average to heroic, where super heroic is kind of the proportions you want when drawing obviously superheroes so it's good to draw from guys like Bart Sears or you know go back as far as you want um, you know um, who's really good go back you know, Frank Miller uh, John Byrne um, who are we talking about here you, you know Jim Lee we do those studies but yeah it's all necessary to draw this kind of Traditionally, and then at the same time also um, draw like the outlandish, exaggerated stuff. And if you want, guys, I can link a lot of the stuff to there. To the, um, I can link all this stuff in the description is what I meant to say. You're streaming. I'm starting to get used to talking and drawing. <laughs> but what has screwed me up, guys, is... Um, what are you saying? What I need to do is either buy a new mic so I can be heard while sketching or record separate voiceovers for digital paintings. Um, yeah. I think... The mic I'm using right now is attached, to the, is part of the camera. It's the um, C920, I think, the Logitech C920. And obviously this mic is not great, not as good as the one on my desk, um, but um, I recommend it. It's like 45 bucks uh, if you find a good spot. I think it's 50, maybe 60 new. But if you um, look for a deal, you can probably get it for 45. All right, I'm gonna color code this. It'll be fun. Coloring. start with the uh, exterior stuff which is I think all of it because this whole side is exterior um, but what I mean is this one is literally has exterior in the name because it's on the outside I forget what they call it let's see what they call it for shits and gigs um, there we go vastus externus sounds like we're about to do some spells <laughs> Somebody that needs to do make that connection and connect anatomy to uh, Harry Potter spell names. Maybe it's been done before already. So that would make this blue in my because it's the outside. All 
wish I had like not expensive Copics to do this with, but I think I have colored pencils somewhere, but this is just quicker. Oops. Alright. But yeah, seeing something color coded like this and doing it yourself really helps solidify it. Um, for me, anyway. Let's see. Seven looks like it's the um, the bicep one I talked about before. The biceps femoris. That is what do I color that thing? I think that's what it is, right? The one behind. Yeah, that's got to be what it is. Yeah, I colored it this maroon color. Biceps femoris, let's do it. I'm not coloring the obvious ones. Um, only the ones that get confusing when the legs turned. Like, I think you can pretty much always spot the butt. Or the gluteus maximus. And then I colored the, these other semis, um, this skin color. So let's do that real quick. They're the semis. We talked about it already. And that kind of wedges and wraps around to the to the kneecap, I believe, or maybe just wedges behind here. The one on the far end is the. Gracilis, which I don't even know what that is, but this one on the far end is not one of them. So it's really this one and this one. feel like a kindergartner when I'm coloring stuff in. <laughs> Let's color. Alright, I'm not sure what this side of the cap is called. You guys, If you guys want to know, let me know. I'm not going to look it up. Man, this pink is really juicy. I don't, I don't use it at all. <clears throat> Probably shouldn't even color these caps in, but just so it's easier to kind of identify on the on the fly. Seems cool. All right, what do we got left here? Um, on the other side. Let's see. It's something I didn't color. But, like I said, it's called the Gracilis. Let me see if I can see it somewhere else. 30. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like the one of the main muscles on the inside of the leg. Um, that kind of uh, overlaps, uh, which I did not color. Um, just for real quick, let's hit the cap. Actually, I think that's the cap there. I'm pretty sure. The patella. And then uh, let's hit the medius. And then
You guys hear the music or no? Let me know. I kind of have it a little softer than usual. Okay. Let's see what that piece is. Oh, there's that tensor face latte. I don't know how to really say that one. Um, but I colored it yellow, I believe. It's the one right in front of that greater tra trochanter. And we don't see the, uh, what are they call it? Satoris? All right. that's where it's at cool thanks Andrew all right so there's some leg action what can we do now hmm I'm looking at more pages and seeing if there's any kind of interesting. I like his breakdowns because they're obviously more blocky. That one's interesting because it's foreshortened. Let me see. We'll do some foreshortened stuff. Um, let me grab a new page. Figure drawing, it's fun. <laughs> I mean, we could do this or we could do like gestures if you want to do gestures. This stuff is more, I feel like it's the, <laughs> the work that you never want to do. I, I always avoid, not avoid, but it's the most study like studies that we do. All right. Where's that blunt pencil at? Cool. So we're just going to do another drawing here. Oops. Still in view here. Right. Foreshortenings are always more difficult, so let's do that one. So I'm just doing a ball for pretty much the butt. Um, I'm putting like a flat side to it, you know, and then the lines will go this way. Because we're just going to keep it simple at first. All right. So let's 
it's only like a couple of this widths over somewhere on here and that's where the heel will be of the foot and I forget maybe they're a how to draw comics channel if you guys watch Clayton is that his name Clayton I mean, yeah, uh, foreshortening is tough because you're you're having to do a lot of different things. Because um, one, it means that you're dealing with perspective. So uh, that's another kind of part that most people kind of not neglect, but um, probably should focus on more than other things. I know I have struggles with it. Um, I'm going to move the leg down a little bit, or the butt. Okay. Um, let's do the great procanter, or whatever they called it. It's like this bone that sticks out from the pelvis. I believe it's that thing, like that. Um, so we're going to do some foreshortening here. Uh, the easiest way to do it, in my experience, is put it, like, if you imagine the leg, you know, um, I don't know, just sticking out from the side, you know, at a side view, turning it um, makes all these cylinders, you know, so... The halfway point from here to there is roughly here, you know, and if you want to break it up, you can just make it into a cylinder. And then we'll break it up further. Okay. But since I'm studying, I'm also looking for their methods. So I'm going to try to get some of the gesture they use in here first. See if I'm on, I'm on point first. Probably went too far down with it, but it's always probably better to exaggerate than not. I think that goes for most of art, I believe. Um, that's usually the advice I hear, if, is if you're going to do something and you're not sure to push it or not, um, it's usually better to push it. Alright, so if I do have it this long, then we got to make that the kneecap, and then this is going to be... A little longer as well. Okay. All this stuff is really just practice. Um, everyone says it when uh, they say it like a broken record, but it's true. It's like all this thing just comes with time. And um, if you do it every day or in a row or consistently, you're going to get it way quicker than someone that's not, obviously. Okay, let's put in the things he's talking about here. Okay. 
Let's see. So if we call out what we see here, let's put in the gluteus medius. I don't know why, I think I just like saying that one. Which would be here. Roughing in the the butt, Maximus, I believe. Maximus Decimus Meridius over here. The gladiator of butts. And we're just gonna put in a few contour lines because make sure we know where it's going. And then this one's that last thing we did that we colored yellow it's the I uh, can't remember what it's called but it's a little sliver of a of a muscle putting it very blocky first all right so let's put in his contour so we know what we're doing here middle piece should be probably lower though it needs to hit up kind of with that greater trochanter I believe cool so this muscle is rounded but we're squaring it off so I can really understand it Okay, that rounds off. And then this thing goes all the way down here. We're going to extend this calf a little bit, make it a little bigger. I'll have to erase most of it. Let's see. Because what you're looking for is a perspective. I know they're both great artists, but whose work do you like better, Mark Silvestri or who? How do you pronounce his name? I can't remember. Um, personally, uh, I think Silvestri's too. I, I think wild. For I think a lot of times he's a little bit of a doodler. Um, and I've probably said it before, but uh, yeah, so I'll go with uh, Wills. Or 
let's see. What's your uh, favorite? Yeah, I, I think um, I do love his detail, but that's what I'm saying. Sometimes he gets a little bit too carried away, and that's, I think it's the same thing, the issue that I have with uh, Finch as well. But Finch, I think, gets more appeal or something. I don't know why I like Finch more. For some reason, I just do. Because they're very similar. Alright, so kneecap. This is the bone, shin bone. Let's shade in a little bit. I know I'm turning the page, guys, but it makes it so much easier to find good lines. <laughs> I think Sylvester's a really funny guy, though. I'm a fan. Alexa, stop it. <laughs> She's always causing trouble. Um, there's so many different kinds, and I almost think like we're starting a new boom between the movies pushing the superhero stuff and image comics popularizing the more um not cape stuff it's becoming super cool to see uh, a whole lot of different artists um, not just the big names so um you know that's really big for everybody in comic books and it's kind of one of my goals for life uh, is to kind of help um, drive the, I don't know, drive the popularity of comics. Um, you know what I mean? I think it's one of my larger goals that are outside of get good at, get good at art and storytelling. Um, I want to kind of like bring the bring upon like a great new not single-handedly of course you can't really do it that way and you wouldn't want to but you know be a part of a resurgence that's kind of already started to happen so which is cool all right i'm going to put in the little functional looking kneecap there but yeah you're right new renaissance yep you guys watch the uh, sci-fi um, channels, Image Comics, five-part series, because it's awesome. Hopefully, if you've seen it, if you have, let me know what you think. I'm not drawing the foot right now. I'm just gonna do this. Uh, too big. I meant that. All right.
Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, I was... I don't know how I missed when it first came out, but yeah, I, uh, I saw it not too recently, but recent enough for me to remember. But yeah, that's a good documentary. Um, there's a lot of cool, like, fan art documentaries for a lot of the big names on YouTube, which is cool. One of the better parts of YouTube is fan-made, you know, documentaries. But yeah, Valerie, I do agree as well. Um, it's all about the storytelling. Um, it's funny, a lot of the early stuff I did for my sample work was more, um... Kind of experimental because I have all these ideas of how to tell stories in a better way or in a cooler way or in a just more innovative way um, and I think that's like the type maybe B approach to things it's kind of um, how would you say it it's just like the more artsy approach you know let me look at you guys checked out oh you guys get checked out Scott McCloud stuff Like his his books, well, one his uh, let me think. Oh, the sculptor. There we go. The sculptor was really good. Read that. It's one of the best comic books ever made. Um, and his understanding understanding and making comics books. I'm pretty sure they're taught in schools. That's how good they are. You guys gotta let me know. <laughs> Look at this. We've got some mannequin uh, storytelling there. That's pretty funny. What are you doing, bro? Uh, mannequins. Uh, in perspective. Cool. Um, but yeah, making comics. If you guys haven't read it, read it. Oh, you wrote any other uh, essays on um, how to make more innovative storytelling or stuff on the, the sculptor or Scott McCloud? Anyway, I'm looking here for these few definitions here. There we go. He explains it so awesome right here. So there's four different kinds of ways to look at comic art. Uh, classicist, animist, formalist and uh, uh iconoclasts and they're it's hugely different like one focuses on the beauty of the panels one's more about putting human life into the storytelling um one's more about just experimenting in uh in the comic form and the other one is more like authenticity and that's kind of how i approached things back in the day I was more just trying to do cool things with it which i probably will get back to eventually um, and just want to tell the stories I want to tell. Oh, you're in school right now? Are you in school? Oh, yeah, that's right. You said you're in class for comics. Um, yeah, I've read through that thing uh, a bountiful amount of times. <laughs> um, but yeah, I stumbled upon it because of um, actually uh, one of the my girlfriend's back way back in the day was taking a class for comics and um that's how i was introduced to it. i was like oh shoot i'm definitely reading this um and yeah i think it's like one of the best resources for making comics ever i just want to give some context to what i'm drawing here so i'm just going to put in some of the back Get a little bonus learning. Oh, this is my favorite song in the whole. Oh man, I gotta replay it. This is my favorite song in the. Uh, in all of Zelda. Well, not all of Zelda, all of Breath of the Wild. Uh, I went too far.
cool. I'm definitely going to check that out. Uh, what's your link to your page? Oh, classic. Yeah, classic uh, Lost Woods. I think I learned Groody Valley at some point. All right. Um, what was I doing over here? Shading? No, I was uh, going to add the back. I forgot. Okay. Um, I could clear this up a little bit too. Make it a little bit more clear what's going on. But he wasn't super clear in his drawing anyway. And that's what I'm going off of. Like this spot is very unclear. But yeah, he's got it like a set of stairs here. His is a little more organic than mine. If you look at his book, I'm gonna try to curve it. Oh yeah, this is my favorite song though. Let me turn it up. It's awesome. It's got like such a um, a climb, a crescendo, I guess is what they would call it, maybe. This is kind of the intro to it. But yeah, give me a link to your uh, page. Um, Valerie, so I can read those essays. And um, yeah, I'll check out your guitar work <laughs> as well. Andrew. I believe my foot just needs to be pulled back because it looks like it's foreshortened, but this part is not for some reason. I think that's one of the issues I have here. I think this foot needs to be here after looking at it. Oh, cool. Thanks. Appreciate it. I'll check it out. Send me a message. Yeah, this view is a little bit funky because it's one view that I never really I've drawn before. <laughs> um, some views you just never draw. Seems okay. Just seems like it's in a different perspective than maybe the other parts. Let's see. I'm going to just slim it down. Okay. 
I'm gonna draw this one. Never thought I'd be streaming Hogarth drawings. To Jeremy. Jeremy's uh, not in today. It's not a part of the crew. Need more real estate over here. drawn that view before. Let me see. Maybe we'll do this one. Uh, yeah, you're here. You're much more interesting, Valerie. Oh, very cool. Awesome. I will um, check all the notifications afterwards because um, I got the music playing from the phone. Uh, but yeah, cool. I'll, you know, anybody who wants to friend that's watching can friend. And um, it'd be cool to connect. Facebook's one of the uh, redeeming factors for you know for Facebook really otherwise it's kind of almost a waste of time for me maybe a little too much curve let's go up there So have you guys played Breath of the Wild since we're listening to uh, the soundtrack? It's kind of, um, you know, it's the newest Zelda game on the Switch, Nintendo Switch. Came out last year. 
I gotta say, it might be one of the single most detractors from me doing art last year. I'm pretty sure I put in over 100, no, definitely over 150 hours in that game. Um, I'm, I might be working for DC Comics if that game never came out. Thanks, Nintendo. <laughs> but, yeah, you can't blame them because you're, you're lazy. Or, not kind of as lazy. I think everything kind of contributes to your, whatever you're doing. If that's what something that you're passionate about, even if it's playing a game, um, it's going to add to your art eventually, even though you're kind of slacking on the whole, um, you know, working at it <laughs> part of it. So, all right. Just trying to break down these shapes he's got here. There you go. That's your, in some ways you're blessed there, Valerie. You're blessed with lack of video game addictions. Um, I'm just, a, I get, not that I get easily addicted. I just like a lot of different kind of storytelling and, and um, games have a good one. A good, I think I got the Joe Mad approach to that he's a very he's almost as much a a game lover as, as a comic artist uh, or comic like storyteller and I kind of feel somewhat similar I read about as many comics as I play video games so it's just that I like drawing and telling my own stories so Yeah, that's very, um, why did I move that muscle? It needs to be staying there. It needs to stay there. But yeah, like I, like I said, I am, uh, kind of get addicted to things easy. So whatever I'm in the flow of, um, let's just say I, you know, I draw all day, and that's something kind of how I got started because I just would get addicted to it. But um, let's just say I do start playing a video game for a while, you can easily get me addicted to it. And, um, you know, depending on how you look at it, it's good and bad. Um, so, that's my thoughts on that. Problem is I didn't draw the whole muscle mass because I'm, I think I'm not burning out for the night, but I'm, my, my brain is. Kind of been writing um, my stories. And all the games I play in are tabletop RPGs that, oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> that's that's a definitely a good way to look at it. Uh, it's kind of how I justify looking at um, watching a lot of Nat Geo and documentaries for that. You know, any kind of anything that's going to help your visual library is a good use of your time for sure. But I feel the same way a little bit about uh, video games. A lot of people think it's a huge detriment, um, and it is for your time, but it's not necessarily a huge detriment for your creativity. I think. Obviously, you're going to get somebody's viewpoint because it's somebody's creation and it's not viewing life, but you're going to get something out of it. You're going to get, to me, it's like you looking at art paintings all day. Um, you know, if you look at a bunch of certain artists' paintings, 
you might start liking more of that kind of stuff or gravitating to that style more, you know? Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> My stories. Nothing's really out yet, Jeremy. Um, but Valerie, if you haven't heard, I have a, I'm working on a cyberpunk racing comic uh, called Star Circuit. It's at the bottom of the page um, on on the live stream, the bottom left. And uh, yeah, it's a, uh, I'm working on it for more than a year, more than two years almost, technically. Um, I didn't think I was going to really go through with it until this year, but I needed a project to kind of push my skills and it's something that's turned into something bigger than what originally started as um, but yeah doing a lot of designs for that um, but yeah you can go to that website or click that website and then go to my patreon and there's even more stuff there I think than the actual website right now but yeah no actual comic pages are up I'm just in pre-production Yep, pretty much a lot of good practice. Hmm. Just realized I'm a little high on this leg muscle. Yeah, I did, um, recently I did the, uh, the indie comics, um, Go City Comics, um, 5x5 five five Fest. I don't know if you heard of it. But it's, um, making a five-page comic in five days. And definitely learned a lot. I was too ambitious and also too naive about the story um, I was going to do, but they kind of give you a subject, and my subject was definitely out of my comfort zone, but try to make it work as much as possible. Um, anyway, I did it, and I did it by myself, which is I'm pretty proud of. I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't win, because it was a prize, but... Um, too much curve here. I didn't win, and I tried real hard. Um, you know, just like pretty much stayed up five days straight or something. And stay up, but I didn't get a lot of sleep and didn't get great sleep. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot there. It's like I said it before I began the project because I was like. Um, you know, at the very least, I'll learn a lot, you know? And at the very least, I learned a lot. Learned a lot about, like, one, where my capabilities were, and two, where, um, like, pacing and how much you can fit on a page and how long it takes to fit what you're trying to fit on a page and get actually drawn. Um... I started liking the letter because of it, you know, and I've never did all the jobs, including, you know, editing and the rest, you know, I've never done that before, so. Oh yeah, cool. I'm probably going to do it next year, but it's one of those things where a high intensity thing for a few days which I'm not really a believer in um, I think that can burn you out and it, if you're not like a headstrong kind of person it might it probably killed somebody's passions if they put in a lot of work and it didn't come out as the way they wanted it and 
I think it's just sometimes better just to keep working at a steady pace rather than, you know, go all out for a few days and get frustrated and um, disappointed. What kind of projects did you do at uh, SCAD though? Like something like that? It's like, uh, here's a set of scenarios and, you know, finish it over the weekend or whatever. Sounds like a school project to me. <laughs> I think it's just sound effects now. We got 25 minutes left. Thinking what we could play. Thinking some Chrono Trigger. You guys are fans of Chrono Trigger. Oh, there you go. That's, um, I think that's Scott McCloud's basic idea for, he's got a 24 hour comic thing. And that is, anybody speak Spanish? Because I don't know what that is. But the normal homework was an average of three or four pages over the weekend or between classes. Yeah, that's like, um, I like that approach, but sometimes that can, I don't know, sometimes that's not the approach. I kind of, it's almost, it can become what happens when you see speed paintings. It's, at first it's better to go slow, I think, but obviously if it's just a school assignment, it's part of the learning, you know, it's the learning curve. So that's cool, definitely. I remember, I remember college. Um, though I was doing, uh, CG. That's the way to do it. I think that's um, part of why college is so good, it's because it's more about just knocking out the uh, mileage, you know? Yeah, I did do the uh, schoolism thing with Alvin Lee. Um, super, super good. Uh, he's not the, I don't think he's the best teacher out there, but he is one of the best, um, I'd say, like artists with simplified anatomy and, and storytelling. Oh, he's really good. I think he's one of the best. I mean, he's working at Riot Games now, but still super good. Let's do some Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime is one of my favorite games as well. It's like super atmospheric. I, nowadays, I just listen to the music, but um, they're supposed to release a new game eventually, so it kind of is on my mind. And it's just chill. 
It's got some atmospheric, you know, feel to everything. Yeah, I agree, Valerie. Um, but different, I feel like different guys do it a little bit differently, you know, between classes. Um, but the whole approach is about the same where, you know, you get a critique, work on it, practice it, you know. Um, totally agree, though. Um, I do want to know your take on, on school, though, since you're kind of in it. Um, I don't know. These days, I kind of think um, I regret going to school. But at the same time, I wouldn't have had the path I've had if I didn't. So I don't really know. But if I had to do it again, I wouldn't have gone to school. As all the art stuff, all the comic stuff, I taught myself. Um, and... I think that, you know, I'm disciplined enough to pull it off, um, but not everybody is, and so I feel like school is useful, it's just kind of like become more of a scam with tuition and everything, so I'd like your take on it. I know Jeremy dropped out of SCAD. But that's just because he's too good. He's too good for school. Some cross sections, just light ones, just to feel it out perspective wise. He puts an arrow this way because the light is pointing down. Obviously, this one's going this way. And this thing is so funny. Pretty sure I did this at a day job. Just want to mess with mannequins. Well, I was at a meeting or something. Trash. <laughs> could be bigger quite a bit bigger but I think that's not the focus right now but it should be probably more like this all right I would agree in general I taught myself how to paint and write and cinematography while I was in scan for drawing sequential art uh, ironically comic drawing is among my weaker areas Huh. Ironically, but maybe, uh, maybe based in facts or something like that. But that was the auto didactism I learned there. Let me do those other skills. Okay, I know what you mean. And now I find myself going back to my notes daily to retreat, reteach myself how to draw. Interesting. I think it's all about mindset. I think that's, I talk, maybe I talked, talked about it yesterday about the growth mindset. Um, 
you can be in school and totally have the wrong mindset and not learn anywhere near as much. Um, that's kind of what happened with me. I was just like partying in, in when I went to school, but afterward I taught myself quickly, not quickly, but reasonably quick how to draw. Um, believe me, at some point I'm going to release all the crappy drawings I did in the beginning. And uh, yeah, you just got to knock it out. Either way, yeah, I get your point. It's all about believing in yourself too. If you really want something to happen, you got to put the work in and then believe that it will happen. That's it. And um, the kind of thing with comics is that just start doing a comic or start doing pages and you'll easily find out if it's something you want to do or um, you know, just easily find out um, what you like about it where you need to work on it, you know. I think comics are super addicting when you start making them. You're like, it's so much work. It's kind of like stop animation. It's like so much work. But when you see a guy, in the case of stop animation, like, you know, actually have a walk cycle or something, um, it's super cool, you know. Same in comics. It's like once you see, like, a few of your pages and have, like, an arc or a storyline play out, uh, and it actually feels good. Um, I don't know. I'm just addicted, addicted to that. And I also have this kind of dream to draw for DC Comics, which you guys know about. So um, it's not even about doing the cape stuff forever. It's just that I want to do my takes on them. I want to be, you know... And also learn from the industry while working. You know what I mean? True, I've learned a lot in school, but I was so poor at drawing. I was pretty far behind and too busy playing catch up. Now I'm ahead of most of my classmates because of how I push myself. There's an artist in here. Oh, yeah, Sikra. Yeah, it says some people are more intuitive and some are more analytical when it comes to learning art. Yeah, I think that's very true. Um, and there's a whole lot of different kinds of art and even within things like comics there's a whole uh, uh, there's a whole crazy section of artists that do comics totally different than the mainstream and um, the other way around you know what I mean there's a the mainstream is like mainstream for a reason because it's super appealing they knocked it they n knocked it out of the park over uh the course of 70 years and refined it over and over and over and over until it became what it is today um which really should be more popular than it is so i'm not going to color code this one um because i think they're all there or maybe i should color code i don't know you get a little bit of everything in here, but I don't really need to. I, I think I, I think I got it. Um, just for the last, however long here, I've got ten minutes. I'm just gonna do some mannequins. How about that? Or I can uh, do some star circuit. Kind of working on my star circuit uh, head turns. You can work on those. A really good argument for school is the multiple disciplines. Film, writing, play such a large role in how you approach comics that it's important to know what to draw from them. It's a good point. Uh, I think you can figure that out on yourself, though, or figure it out yourself um, with enough years. But maybe you can figure that out quicker in school. I just think it took me at least a few years to figure out what I'm pulling. Like I was saying about video games. Um, if you're have the if you have the growth mindset and you're looking at video games in a certain light, they're useful. You know, if you're analyzing why the story's working in a certain way or what makes the gameplay immersive, um, you can definitely pull those um, into shot design and the rest. Anyway. Let's 
see here. Yeah, I'll just work on the same page, do some mannequins, because I don't feel like, I only have 10 minutes, I don't think I'm going to do something great for that. Yep, right, for sure. The continuity of everything, uh, it all is um, as to everything else you do. Um, I do think that you have to factor in the money situation, though, because when you graduate, you're going to be kind of set back, and that can affect your, you know, it might kill your whole career, or it might you know, just be a, something to hurdle over, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I only have 10 minutes, so I'm just going to do maybe mannequins of it. Say goodbye to Hogarth, he'll be back. Switch up the song here. See this? Hopefully, you can see it. All right. Tell you what, though, next week we're definitely doing um, the Planes of the Lips, like you suggested, because they are fun and challenging. 
because it's like a Jeremy's favorite word. Um, nuanced. To get him right. I mean, a lot of things are, but... be a little bit more um, I'm just gonna draw over it with a more sharp pencil it's gonna feel amazing this chick has a little bit of stomach here she's like pregnant or something in this picture I don't an old school motion picture or not motion but like um, the study of motion it's one of these books like that All right. I'm just breaking everything apart here Should be the other way. I don't know why I drew it that way. <laughs> Funny though. That should be at more eye level.
kind of worked backwards on this one, which is pretty funny. But it's 10 o'clock. Let me just add in this leg and we'll get off of this thing. Uh, thanks for everybody um, that showed up. Um, it's like um, really loving the interactions with everybody. Um, it's kind of really becoming what I wanted the, the stream to become. Is just like a place where a bunch of artists can get together, have some fun, talk about things, um, chat about whatever, and... and just have a place to go on on a weekday um, but that was the goal I wanted to kind of get out of it and uh, it's becoming more and more of that so thanks for everybody for showing up this is my uh, mannequin lady there we go like that Let's erase away what we don't see Cool. All right. Um, the head is too like cylindrical for my ladiness. There we go. Cool. Awesome, everybody. Um, I'm gonna. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, Andrew. Uh, thanks for not talking so much this time, Jeremy. Um, <laughs> no, you should have talked more. Uh, I'll friend everybody. Good night. Um, tomorrow is we do some more hard service stuff. I like to pick one day of the week to do hard service stuff. I could finish up on a spaceship and, um, you know, do something a little different tomorrow. But yeah, I'll have a good night. And thanks uh, for coming. Bye.